Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Mike. I'm a doctor working in California and co-founder of Remnote. Today, I wanted to start a new YouTube series on evidence-based learning strategies. I'll be sharing everything I know about how to study for exams, how to train your brain to learn effectively, and I'll be backing everything I talk about with science. Then at the end of the video, I'll show you exactly how I apply science to my studies because getting better grades doesn't always require you to study for long hours. In fact, if you can use science, you can actually study less, but study smarter and even have some fun in the process. According to the books, Make It Stick and How to Become a Straight A Student, these are the most effective study strategies. Quizzing yourself, spacing it out, and mixing it up. Some of you might know these as active recall, space repetition, and interleaving. These are by far the best ways to study, and in fact, a study by Augustine at Yale University recommended that all medical students use these strategies to study medicine. By the way, all the science I mentioned in this video will be linked in the description below. So I'll start by explaining why these strategies work, and then I'll talk about the science behind it, and then I'll show you my favorite ways to use these strategies just to give you some examples that you can try immediately after this video. Timestamps are in the description below. So why are these three strategies the best? Well, the simple answer is that they are the most difficult ways to study. They force you to challenge yourself and use a lot of cognitive effort, which is counterintuitive. Many students think that when they study and it's not clicking, it means that they're not making progress and that something is wrong with them. Well, in reality, nothing's wrong with you, and it's the struggle that improves your learning and actually strengthens the connections in your brain. A study by Rosner and Elman looked at two groups of students. The first group was given the questions and the answers to study, whereas the second group was given only the questions and got some help coming up with the answers, but they weren't spoon-fed the answers. So the second group was forced to study under tougher conditions. Well, it turns out that the second group performed way better. To figure out the reason why, they took MRIs of the students' brains, and here are the results. Blue is the first group and red is the second. Notice how the red areas aren't just bigger, but they're in more locations, including the prefrontal, posterior, and hippocampus, suggesting stronger connections between different parts of the brain. So the takeaway message here is that the harder your brain works when you're studying, the more brain activity you'll induce, the more connections you'll create, and the better the information will stick. Here's another study that demonstrates the same idea. What is learned under difficult conditions is hard to forget. So the goal is always to use more brain power. More effort equals more attention. Okay, let's dive into the three best study strategies, and we'll start with quizzing, aka active recall. This basically means testing yourself. As a student, the way to get good grades is by doing well on your exams. So it makes sense that you should practice exactly how you should be tested on the exam. So ask yourself this, can you become a good musician if you just listen to music? No, you have to pick up the instrument and you have to play it. You have to go through the motions. Can you become a good basketball player by just watching basketball? No, you have to pick up the basketball and play. Well, it's the same thing with studying. Can you get your exam questions correct if you just read the textbook multiple times? No, you need to put your mind through the same motions. You gotta cover up the answers and test yourself to see if you can actually answer the questions correctly. And quizzing yourself definitely works. As shown in this study by Rodiger and Karpik, they took three groups of students and made them study for a test. All three groups were allowed to study for the exact same amount of time, but they all had different study methods. The first group read the lectures four times. The second group read the lectures three times and then quizzed themselves once. And then the third group got to read the lectures only once, but then they quizzed themselves three times. And the results show that the third group did the best because even if you only read your book once, quizzing yourself will actually make up for it because it's exactly how you'll be tested on the exam. So some of you are probably thinking that testing yourself is so hard and you hate it when teachers give you pop quizzes. Well, a study by Cornell showed that when you quiz yourself, even if you get the answers wrong, you're still learning because you're forcing your brain to go through the same motions. Next, let's talk about spacing it out, AKA spaced repetition. This basically means that you spread out your studying over time. You don't wanna cram the night before the test, obviously, but you also don't wanna spend 10 hours a day studying. 
Studying more doesn't always mean you'll get better grades. Let's pretend that two people, say Gary and Ash, have a test at the end of the week. And they're rivals, so they want to compete to see who will do better on the test. But here's the caveat. They are only allowed to study a total of seven minutes. That's it. So Gary decides to get a head start. He doesn't want to cram the night before. So instead he uses all seven of his minutes to study on Monday at the very earliest. Now Ash decides to space out his studying and spread it across the entire week, but he's only allowed to study for seven minutes total, which means he can only study for one minute a day. Who do you think will do better on the test? Well, it turns out Ash is gonna do better because Gary will have forgotten all the information by the time the test rolls around. So we know that spacing out our study sessions is important, but the question then becomes, how far do you space it out? Well, Ebbinghaus published many studies on this topic, and the answer lies in the forgetting curve, which looks incredibly complicated, so I'm gonna explain it in a simpler way. So when you fully understand and remember something, you're at 100%. But after about a day, you'll forget more than half of what you just learned, and eventually it'll drop to zero if you don't review it at all. The way that our memory works is that the longer you wait, the harder it will be to remember. Basically, if you don't practice, you'll get rusty. If you wait and review your material here, then it'll be hardest for you to remember because you'll have almost forgotten it. So the question again is, how long should you wait to review it? How long should you space out your studies? Well, it turns out that the best time to study is right here, right before you're about to forget. And the reason why is because, again, more effort equals more retention. Now let's talk about the third strategy, which is mixing up your studies, AKA interleaving. This basically means that you don't wanna just study one subject or one topic at a time. You wanna switch it up and mix it between different subjects. A simple way to explain this is from a study quoted by Peter Brown. So scientists looked at two groups to see who could score the most points throwing a bean bag into a four foot basket. So for the next 12 weeks, the first group got to practice throwing into a four foot basket every day but the second group only got to practice with a mixture of three foot and five foot baskets. They never got to actually practice with a four foot basket. So at the end of the 12 weeks, the two groups competed to see who could score more points in a four foot basket. Well, it turns out that the second group did better, even when they never practiced with the four foot basket. What the study suggests is that the first group relied on just muscle memory. They were using a very limited part of their brain whereas the second group was forced to calculate the different distances and adjust their motor skills accordingly, meaning they had to use multiple parts of their brain to adapt to the variation. And we see it again and again in the research that mixing it up always results in better learning. So in summary, these three strategies work so well because they're hard and they challenge your brain the most. Quizzing is hard because you aren't allowed to peek at your answers. Instead, you have to come up with them yourself Spacing is hard because you're waiting to study right when you're about to forget the information. Mixing it up is hard because your brain has to understand the connections between different ideas rather than relying on rote memorization. All three of these strategies reinforce the science that more effort equals more retention. So now that we understand the science, let's talk about my favorite ways to apply these strategies. First is quizzing, and there are many ways to quiz yourself. You can find practice tests or practice problems, you can use Cornell Notes, you can use the toggles in a note-taking app, you can use the Feynman technique. There's so many different ways, but to keep this video from being too long, I'll make a separate video talking about all these different methods and link it right here. But my personal favorite way to quiz myself is by using flashcards. You have questions on the front, you have answers on the back, so you can't peek at your answers, but flashcards allows you to run through many topics and ideas very quickly. Next is mixing it up or interleaving your studies. Obviously you wanna switch between different subjects, but a common mistake that people overlook is how often do you actually switch? If you stay on one topic for too long, then you won't get the interleaving effect, but if you switch subjects too often, then you're basically multitasking and that's not helpful either. Cal Newport recommends that you study for 50 minutes and then take a 10 minute break before resuming another 50 minutes. Now, if you aren't used to studying for that long, then I suggest you use Pomodoro, which is a timer that'll help keep you focused for smaller increments, and then you can slowly work your way up. And finally, there's spacing. One of the earliest methods was the Leitner system. 
Basically, you're using flashcards and shoeboxes to keep track of how spaced out your studies should be. Then there came revision timetables, and I'll leave links to everything in the description, but basically it's the same thing as the Leitner system, except you use tables instead of boxes. But nowadays we have spaced repetition software, or SRS for short, and this was developed by Dr. Peter Wozniak. Basically, he used computers to apply the spacing effect, and this removed all the guesswork and told you exactly when you should be studying specific topics. And this is my personal favorite way to space out my studies. So now you know my favorite ways of using these three strategies. By applying science to the way I study, I was able to study less and still be very productive. I was able to start a business, work on real estate, and start a YouTube channel all while training to become a doctor. And my brother Maddie has done the same thing. So we figured out what works and we wanna help you succeed in your studies, which is why we created RemNote, the first smart notes tool that applies science to your studies. We've taken all of our favorite study methods, using flashcards, Pomodoro, SRS, and we've combined them all into one powerful study tool. RemNote automatically converts all your notes into flashcards for active recall with a built-in space repetition software and the organization of digital notes to help you with interleaving. The RemNote algorithm is so powerful that it can calculate when the next best time would be for you to review a specific flashcard based on how well you knew that flashcard. So this allows you to focus on your weak spots and then actually save you time by preventing you from overstudying concepts that you already know pretty well. And since it automatically converts all your notes into flashcards for you, you don't need to waste all that time transcribing them yourself, allowing you to spend even less time studying overall. And the best part about RemNote is that it's free to use. Just go to remnote.io and you can start today. No one teaches us how to study efficiently in school, so we wanted to make RemNote free to use because we think everyone should have access to education. And speaking of free education, Maddie and I also have a free two hour course over on Skillshare. Just follow our special link in the description and sign up for a new account. If you enjoy the tips in this video, then we go into much more detail in our course. So be sure to head on over to Skillshare and you can start learning how to learn as soon as you finish this video. All right, just to summarize, we just talked about the three best evidence-based study strategies. We talked about the science and how more effort equals more attention and we talked about why we created RemNote and how it helps you study smarter. If this video was helpful for you, please take a second to give it a like. It also helps us get discovered by more students and helps spread the knowledge. In the next video of this series, I'll talk about all the study strategies that have been shown by science to be ineffective. These are the ones that you should avoid using, so be sure to subscribe to the channel to get notified when we post that video. Check out this playlist over here for more study tips. And if you want to chat, just follow us on Twitter or Instagram and send us a message. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.